I am really excited about this series on React. I've been wanting to do it for a year. I've been coding React, 40 hours a week working on React apps for at least a year now. And I'm loving the tool, loving the frameworks you build with React. And uh, it, it just changes the way that you think. There's several concepts that React introduces that drastically changes the way you approach building web apps and building stable web apps. Uh, so I really like it. I, I think you'll love it as well. Um, like I said, changes the way you think uh, for the better. So let's get into it. Uh, only prerequisites for watching this is you need to know a little bit of Webpack, which I just did a Webpack video so you can get up to speed. And you'll want to know ES6. I have a few videos on ES6 as well. You don't have to master ES6. You just have to kind of generally know what the concepts are. So go ahead and watch those videos if you haven't seen them. And then let's get into React. So all my code will be in a GitHub repo for this whole series. We're going to start off in the basic React folder. And I did a little bit to add on to where we picked, we left off with the Webpack video. I've installed some Babel stuff. Babel is a, is a great tool for transpiling our React code, which is JSX. And then it'll also transpile our ES6 code at the same time. And then this will go all the way back to at least IE8 support. My company supports IE8. So I can tell you that all the code we're doing here does work in IE8. Uh, so that's great. Um, and we got those installed. And here's what the Webpack config looks like. The biggest change is you see I've added a loader here. So anything that's a JS file gets run through the Babel loader. With the exception of node modules and Bower components, should we have those. Um, and then they'll basically transpile React, JSX, transpile ES6 code, and we're also going to do some bleeding edge features that might not be fully incorporated yet into ES2015, just in case you want to use those. We probably won't get into those in this video. We're going to convert some React HTML attributes. We're going to add class properties to ES6, which is a great feature. We're also going to be able to use decorators. So there we go. That's, um, that's our transpiling, and now we just have to run Webpack to build our code. You can see we're basically taking client JS up here and we're transpiling it down to be client min JS, which is all of our code, which is right there. So here's our index HTML. We simply have an app div, div ID app. That's it. Our entire app is going to render into there. And then our client min JS is of course, we're loading that. So let's go and run an NPM install, get all that going. That's good. Oh yeah, I already ran npm install. And we should just be able to run webpack. There we go, it transpiled. We could also run webpack watch. And that'll watch our code for changes. And as we save, it'll continue to rechange. So I'll take the client JS. And you can see that it will, well, there were no changes there. So it didn't re, it didn't retranspile. Let me add an S. You can see, there we go retranspiled everything. So we're going. Let's go and look at this client JS now and start breaking down the extreme basics of a React app. We're going to import React. We're going to import React DOM, uh, which is our rendering engine. Uh, React is great in that you don't have to render it to HTML. You can render to a whole bunch of stuff. You can render to a, a string. Uh, you can render it to the DOM, which is our active web page, which is what we're using here. And the actual rendering engine is separate from the React syntax, which is a very cool concept uh, that makes it the code you write extremely versatile, even towards native apps and things like that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a layout component or layout class. We're extending the React component. Uh, the core of React is everything is a component. If you were to look at an index.html, everything is an element in HTML. It's a body element with a div element. And that's kind of the concept behind React components. Everything is a component instead of an element. So in this case, we have a layout component. And at the very basic, you need a render method for a component. So the render method is, hey, what are we spitting out? And here's the JSX part of it, which will freak you out at first, is anything wrapped in parens can convert HTML to JavaScript created elements. So in JavaScript, you can do document create elements. Oop. You know, now I just made a div. And then I can do, you know, where div equals, then I can go div dot enter HTML equals some content. So this is basically going to transpile down to stuff like that. But that's a real pain to type. 
So JSX allows you to type something that's much more familiar. You can get great syntax highlighting on it. Uh, if you install a JSX plugin to whatever text editor you're using, Atom or Sublime, and it'll transpile it down. So at first it feels very awkward because you're kind of thinking, aren't I blending HTML with JavaScript? And then you finally realize, no, JavaScript creates HTML elements all the time. This is just an easy way to do it day in, day out. It makes it easy for the developer. And then if you ever want to render a component, you use it as if it were an HTML tag. So just like this, I'm telling now, here's my component for my whole layout. I'm going to go get the app element, which is this guy right here, my ID of app. And I'm going to render my layout into app, and that's my React app. Okay, Webpack is running. And then let's go ahead, open up my file here, my HTML file. And there you go, it works. So I can again go, it's working. Transpiled it, it's working. Okay, great. So let's wrap up our workspace and our workflow here. Um, obviously we'll wanna get some kind of live reload happening and Webpack Dev Server is kind of the standard way of doing that. So let's go ahead and go uh, npm install. Webpack Deb Server. Now let's go ahead and get maybe an npm run dev command going. So Webpack Dev Server is running. And let's go, ahead, so now we could actually run, let me install this globally as well, which I won't be using, but I'll do it for now. Ah. Let's get Webpack Dev Server installed globally. So I have the Webpack Dev Server command. Actually, I need to give it a content base. So since I don't want to serve this folder that I'm in right now, I want to serve the source folder. So I'm just going to go content base is source. So that way it's going to serve index.html will be the root of that. So now I can actually go to localhost 8080. And there we go, I have localhost 8080 working. Let me go ahead and get a split screen going on now. But I don't have live reload up yet. You can do two things. By default, you can go the iframe mode, which is just webpack dev server. And that's index.html. And you'll see this loader bar up there. It'll automatically load your app into a brand new iframe every time. So let's go to working. It's gonna recompile, reload. So that's kind of smooth. If that works for you straight out of the bag, that's great. Another thing you can do is you can add the inline flag and hot flag. Hot will uh, help it do inline a little bit better. So if you add inline and hot, then you're not going to have that top and it's just going to automatically do it inline, which is basically live reload. So we're going to go ahead, go ahead and take that command. And we're gonna just go ahead and make, that's kind of a mouthful to type every time. So let's go ahead and add that to our package JSON. Let's go to our scripts. Let's make a dev. So there we go, npm run dev now. We'll run this command for us. Excellent. npm run dev gets our full webpack dev server running and we're up and rolling. Only other thing I'm gonna change is I don't wanna have all my developers have to do an npm install global of Webpack Dev Server. So I'm actually gonna reference web, the node modules bin. You can see that it installs a command of Webpack Dev Server. It installs a, an executable Webpack Dev Server as well. So I can actually execute this command with dot slash. So I'm gonna go dot slash node modules dot bin slash Webpack Dev Server. And that's taken care of by my package now. So now I can actually uninstall G Webpack Dev Server. Gonna uninstall that one. And now npm run dev will still work because I'm referencing the one that's in my repository. So that's a little bit of a cleaner way. At first with Node.js, we always had everybody install a global for everything. And now I just think it's much cleaner to install it with your package, install it locally to your app, 
That way the, the exact version you need for your app is installed in your app folder. And then you run it with a node script. NPM run dev or NPM start uh, is kind of the standard choices that you would pick. So there we go. That's running. That's our setup for React. Let's actually in the next video get into all these components and how to work with them.